It is time to get excited again. A Pokemon Presents was just announced for February 27th. And for those of you who don't know, that's on Pokemon Day. So yes, the long-awaited Pokemon Day Presents is finally here. It is coming. And there's so many things to speculate about. There's actually been a lot of rumors and leaks. From the Scarlet and Violet DLC to the next remake or Legends game, or maybe a remake of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, or maybe even a new Mystery Dungeon game, the games that can be ported to the new Game Boy and Game Boy Advance emulators on the Switch, and updates to mobile games or new mobile games coming that we don't know of yet. The sheer amount of things to talk about, there's so many. So what better way to talk about it all than with some of our favorite people? Starting with everyone's favorite, Kayla from Kayla's Capsule. Hello, my name is Kayla. This is Cinnamon Peaches and Sage, and I'm happy to be here. And then also we have Cam Tendo. What's up, everybody? It's Cam Tendo, and I'm very excited to be here today. We're going to start with the biggest elephant in the room, and that is the Scarlet and Violet DLC. So, when it comes to the Scarlet and Violet DLC, there's so many things that we can talk about. There's new Pokemon, there's returning Pokemon, there's what we're going to be doing in the DLC, and other tweaks to the game in general. So, Kayla, let's start with you and what you think are going to be things in the update. I think, like most people, there are probably going to be two DLC, kind of like there were for Sword and Shield. I think the question after that is what are the two DLC going to be about? We know that there's a mysterious turtle iguana legendary thing from the Scarlet and Violet book and we know we have those mysterious like beast legendary um, and like the Verizian combo legendary so I'm wondering if we're gonna get one that's more based around the turtle and then one that's more based around the combo three legendary so i could see those being like main pokemon <laughs> in the two dlcs that's a lot of legendaries wow okay <laughs> i didn't well, even think i mean about realistically that. it's one main one for each dlc which is less than sword and shield because oh, yeah, they true. had like yeah they had like the horse and the rider and then like cub Fu, so yeah and then what about you cam tendo what, what do you think is going to be in the dlc I agree with Kayla. I think we're going to get two DLCs, but I also think we're going to get maybe a few more new legendaries because in Sword and Shields, we got, like Kayla said, we got the horses, we got um, Calyrex, but we also got the Regis, then we got mm -hmm. and Urshifu. So I do think that we might get something new, maybe uh, a convergent legendary of a legendary we like we've known, maybe Heatran, a water Heatran or something like that. Ooh, Just something, cool. yeah, something there that we haven't guessed yet, but it'll probably be like a mystery and maybe even a, a new regional form because we only have like two for this gen. Mm. So maybe a new regional and that, that's pretty much where I'm at. Unless I can think of something else. Yeah, in the Sword and Shield DLC, there was also the uh, legendary bird the, the Galarian oh, yeah. legendary birds. So there's actually a lot of legendaries in the Sword and Shield DLC too. So that kind of goes along with the Convergent thing because I feel like so, part of the like lore behind those birds was that they were only named Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres because someone confused them with the original Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres, but they actually aren't the same Pokemon, which I thought yep. was really funny. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. So maybe that was actually like a is that would that count as a convergent species i know that it's like an evolutionary thing that they've introduced in scarlet and violet officially but maybe maybe there'll be some legendaries like that in the dlc and this time they'll actually call them convergent versions of the legendaries i'm cool. curious how they'll explain the lore behind that because like for the legendary birds it's fine they're like legendaries that are just rare they don't have like a big mythical aside from like you know lugia kind of you know being in charge of them um mm -hmm. they don't have like a huge like backstory behind them but mm -hmm. a lot of the legendaries and mythicals do so i'm very curious if they do convergent forms of different legendaries are they going to explain this using time travel multiversal shenaniganry or are they just gonna be like we don't know they're just here <laughs> oh man that would be crazy. I, I'm excited for like the lore implications of 
of what else they're gonna show us because they already showed a lot of new lore stuff. Like they really dived into the multiverse and the time travel with Scarlet and Violet that like they've never dived into it so hard before with any of the previous games. Uh, as for other things- and Moon. That... Wait, Arguably what? Sun and Moon. Arguably yeah. Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon started <laughs> it, right? But I think that Scarlet Violet just like really took it to the next level, you know? Uh, but aside from the legendaries and, and all that, I do think that we're also going to see the return of the missing Pokemon that still aren't on any of the Switch games. Like, I think uh, Zebstrika and that whole line's not in it. Minior is not on the Switch. A few other Pokemon that I can't think of right off the top of my head right now. I think the Snivy line and isn't on the Switch either, right? Am I bugging? Oh, neither is Epic, I believe. Tepig, yeah, okay, yeah. So, like, the Gen 5 starters besides Oshawott aren't on there. And, uh, yeah, so I think we're going to see the return of them as well as uh, some other Pokemon I think they'll add to the Scarlet and Violet decks. They could either add them via D DLC or via raids. It's hard to tell if they're going to add things. I think starters we might get through raids, um, but I think some of the other Pokemon that are missing that we'll get in DLC. Well, do you think we're going to, like, travel new areas in the DLC? Yes. Okay. And what, what is that I face, have... Kayla? Do you not agree? No. <laughs> no, I do agree. Oh, okay. I was like, keep going, Cam. I want to know. know what you're I was going to say, I, I have a little theory about that, if you guys don't mind. Go ahead. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know, but I believe they, they did, like, a random patch update, and they added a character named Billy O'Nair in the game's code. And a lot of people theorize that this character is Namona's father, because Namona's. If you go to Namona's house, her, her she has maids, and they mention this Billy O'Nair person. And I have like a Billy O'Nair. Yeah, I their just name got is it. literally. Oh! Get it? Because they have maids, and their name is Billy O'Nair. They're billionaires. Billionaires. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really funny. That's fantastic. That's probably her dad. Yeah, it has to be because Namona, if you guys don't know, she's rich. Like that house that we see off from ours is hers. That was something I and, focused yeah, and... on in my like pre-release analysis of Scarlet and Violet. I was like, these people are rich as hell. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's filthy rich. And my theory <laughs> is that her dad shows up and he uh he's like, Hey, I have an island off, you know, the, the shores of Paladea. And it's going to be a battle facility because my daughter loves to battle. And I figured that you can come here and battle all your favorite characters throughout the game. Like maybe Team Bird and Gym Leaders, the Elite Four, maybe even Gita. Just, oh, even the teachers, you know, you can just battle every major character throughout the game. Penny, Arvin, just a huge tournament that isn't the star tournament or whatever the after school tournament's called. But just... He, they can even go the extra mile and make it, I doubt this, but they can do like a Pokemon World Tournament type thing where previous characters return because if this, if Penny is rich, I can assume she can afford to have other trainers. They can even excuse it like, I want to fight trainers from all over the world. And like Cynthia shows up or like just, uh, just really, really powerful trainers from throughout the series show up and fight you at her little battle island that her dad bought for. I think it's actually pretty likely that we'll see trainers from other regions, especially considering Penny has gone to Galar, like that's confirmed. So like she was there for like a year, so she must have connections to Galar in some way. I wouldn't be surprised if especially characters from Galar we see in the DLC in some way, you know, like mm -hmm. between Nimona being rich and Penny having connections, like <laughs> they should show up. And we had Sonya's book too. Like, I would not be surprised if we see Sonya. Yes, 100%. I just think that the big, the thing that Sword and Shield were missing for a lot of people was the return of old characters. Like it was, mm -hmm. Sword and Shield was strictly new characters. Meanwhile, previous games, even Sun and Moon was an anniversary game. So they kind of had that going for it. But like their Looker, who was a staple since Gen 4, like skipped Gen 8. He even appeared in Gen 7, Gen 6, Gen 5. He just wasn't in Gen 8, and he isn't in Gen 9 at this moment. He could show up because he's an investigator, and I feel like the Area Zero a big mystery for him to try to, you know, want to unsolve. So they have that. That's a perfect character to want to bring back. Like Looker being there, 
And I, I just I just want to see old people return, especially in this new art style that they have going on for Gen I. Yeah. It would be so cool if the time machine gets activated and we go down to check it out and it's like Looker and he's like, we have to prepare, they're coming. And then like something comes through the time machine that we have to like take care of, you know, like almost like Ultra Beast, but like different, you know? Or what if the new areas are like a past version of Paul Dea or a future version of Paul Dea or something like that? That we can access through the time machine? Yeah. Yeah, or, or like a know, small part yeah, of the I mean, world like that. Where he has battle data in the game as well. Wait, what does? Eve, the person that wrote the Scarlet and Violet book, in the game's mm -hmm. code, along with Billy O'Nair, they added battle data for named Heath, the guy that made the Scarlet, the Scarlet and Violet book. You can't interact with it, but it's in the game's code that he was meant to be a fighter. Like, and it was added uh, randomly sometime. I believe in January. Hmm. Interesting. And he That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because I believe the Scarlet and Violet book was made like years, decades ago before the events of the game. So the fact random guy who's assumedly dead because the book is very old, the fact that he has battle data implies that we're gonna uh, somehow manage to fight this very old guy at some point. Yeah, some of the leaks for the Scarlet and Violet DLC, I think people were mentioning that it's like so cool that pe they're, the people who know what it is are waiting to see everyone's reaction to it because apparently it's going to be like something really, you know, intriguing enough to that people are going to like freak out on camera. So maybe it will be something like that. Maybe or maybe you go to like a past or future version of a different region or something like that. I just feel like it's got to be something like so big that would really cap captivate us in that way. I wouldn't be surprised if we get something similar to Gen 7, where we are able, because in Gen 7, we could go to different places, you know, through ultra wormholes and all of mm -hmm. that, especially in ultra sun, ultra moon. I wouldn't be surprised if in the DLC, we're allowed to access different times. Um, and maybe in one of those times, we can find heat. You know, it would be very cool if instead of limiting it to we're just going to go to one time or two times, we can go to a lot of different times, find a lot of really interesting, weird things um, and kind of put together the timeline. Because at this point, like the timeline is kind of weird, like really weird. Yeah. Yeah. The events of Scarlet and Violet don't really add up. There's a lot of things that just don't make a lot of sense especially once you reach area zero and like see everything there's just a bunch of weird shenanigans happening and did you guys notice that in the book the um iron treads and great tusks look very very different from the ones we actually catch in game yeah I did they, especially that. their feet <laughs> like they there's a drawing of them and then there's a picture and the picture looks completely different which is crazy because it implies that Game Freak made a another version of it just to throw you off. Maybe that one also exists, but there's like a weird perception we know from leakers that the Paradox, Verizion, and Suicune thing is happening. But in the book, it states that they're not real. Like the title says that they're Ash into Pokemon. So unless you two might have a good little mini theory or explanation as to how that could be, I'm very intrigued as to how Pokemon are just sprouting to life mysteriously through a book. Yeah, so so my my theory is that it's not the book that's causing them to sprout to life. It's the third legendary having access to multiversal knowledge. Um, so that includes knowledge across both time and space. And the third legendary is imparting that knowledge onto people like Heath and these other people. So um, like, because they're getting this information like third hand, it makes total sense that they would be confused about it and not necessarily present it in the correct way when they're making these drawings. Um, I think that if if it's coming from the people, it doesn't make sense for them to come out differently. But if they're hearing it like third hand from the legendary um, as they get closer to area zero, then it's like, oh, yeah, it makes sense that this is just like not quite right. 
Is there anything else that we think might be added in the Scarlet and Violet DLC? More customization. You think so? You think they might actually do that? Because I know we want yes. it. <laughs> I know we want it. I think it. they will. I think they will. Really? They have to. They better. I want to just wear cute clothes. Here's an idea, okay? School trip. And you visit a new area and they're like, hey, we're in this new place. Maybe you can dress outside of school since we're technically like to, to fit. Because you know how in a DLC for Sword and Shield, we had to... <laughs> They gave us like these new, new DLC clothing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Doge mm -hmm. in the exploration suit. Maybe yep. we can just dress outside of our school suit, like it, like an explorer's uniform or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think about that. I think you're, you're right. I think we will at least get one or two new outfits based on whatever new spots we go to. And if you're right about it being two waves, it's at least going to be two new outfits, most likely. I think I yeah, agree I with that. I feel like the major customization will come from like hairstyles and things like that. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping it'll be like, because it's kind of like a field trip. Um, like in real life, kids get to show their self-expression when they go on field trips. So we should be able to wear whatever we want. <laughs> you think and they'll put in a full, a full customization <laughs> section just for the DLC? You think so? This is wishful thinking. It is. Do I it's realistically possible. think that they're going to do this? Hey, it's possible. Do I hope that they're going to do this? Yes. <laughs> it, it, just rest. It, it is possible. So rest assured that it's possible. So there is a possibility. It could happen. It's not unseen or unheard of. So, okay. On that note <laughs> of wishful thinking and possibly just, you know, positive hopes because it might actually happen. Um, let's go ahead and move on to what kind of remakes we think we're going to see. Like, do you think it's going to be a Pokemon Let's Go game? Do you think it's going to be Pokemon Legends game? Do you think it's going to be like a Gen 5 remake? What's going to happen? Because we got like, what, three options here. Let's Go Johto. We have um, Legends Johto. <laughs> we have Gen 5 remakes, which would be the most standard next step, logically. I think that's what they were, would do at this point. But what do you guys think? Let's start with you, Cam. Oh, I don't I don't really think that we might get remakes in this presents, but if we were, I feel like we might get something related to Joe's Joe because we get yeah, we get major gen remakes every even number gen recently. Like with Gen 6, we got Gen uh three, and with Gen 8, we got Gen 4. So I feel like if we were to get another remake, it would be around generation 10 because they have like this new cycle that they're doing. And I feel like with Let's Go, I feel like that started a new trend of having two new lines of remakes, like a more simplistic line of remakes for Gens 1 forward. And then for the people that want a more traditional style remake, we'll get uh, Gen 5 remakes next gen. But for now, I feel like this is the gen we would normally get maybe a Johto game or... A, yeah, a Let's Go style Jodo game because Let's Go, as much as a lot of people don't like it, it was well received and it was a really, really pretty game. <laughs> like, it was really good. So do you think that these remakes are going to be outsourced like they did for BDSP or do you think Game Freak's going to make them? BDSP wasn't my favorite game. It was no one's favorite. <laughs> I, yeah, I, don't, I think everyone's on the same page on that. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't that good of a game, but I do think that maybe... If this is a let's go game, Freak will feel more inclined to make it over outsourcing it to a different company. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. Or a Legends. But, Legends game. Yeah. Would... If, if it is I think Legends, it's going to be a while for that. I think. Yeah. It might be a while for the next Legends game, but definitely yeah. let's go. I feel like it's more likely than mm -hmm. Gen 5 at this point, which is sad because I love Gen 5, yeah. but I also love Johto. And yeah, I want to see more Johto. So. Yeah, me too. I actually agree with you. I, I feel like the uh johto is is more what they are inclined to remake at this point because it's more outdated gen 5 is not like that outdated you know like i feel like they they go for games that really need it more so than games that don't i think it's even more than that though i think with all of the time theming in this generation i think johto makes the most logical sense 
yeah. because you've got Celebi, you've got um, oh, yes. the history, you've got the history of the Johto region. Uh -huh. um, you have, in terms of continuity with uh, Let's Go, potentially, you've got all the changes that happened in Let's Go compared to the original games and how those could manifest in a future Johto. I could definitely see either, if, if they do a Let's Go, they could follow it from the previous Let's Go and have some of those changes that they incorporated yeah. in terms of lore and timeline <laughs> mm -hmm. um, in a new Let's Go game. I could also see, because Let's Go was almost partly a gimmick around Pokemon Go, I could also see it being more straight like Gen 2 remakes as opposed to being connected to let's go yeah. but i'm definitely thinking we're gonna see some gen 2 i think they're gonna um, redo the as... catching mechanic at least yeah because <laughs> well because it was very much a gimmick you know yes. and pokemon go it it still has like a loyal fan base but it's not as crazy as it was no yeah not even i am a firm believer in the let's go timeline existing because mm -hmm. the let's go continuity is vastly different than the original mm -hmm. there are way too many changes that just feel really really off like you aren't like yeah red isn't the main character you are but red still exists in that world as a trainer same with blue he's famous for essentially no reason outside of being oak's grandson yep yeah certain things happened later in the timeline and it would be fascinating to see how that impacted silver especially yeah, yeah. considering so I, I feel like the next Johto game, whether it's like a Legends game or if it's a remake or a Let's Go or whatever it is, I know that a lot of people like want to see the past and like how things were formed because, you know, they talk about that lore so much in the Johto games. But I actually feel like they're, it's going to take place in the future, oddly enough, because it's so opposite of what the region represents. The region is so steeped in the past that I feel like it actually might be a very nintendo slash game freak move to make the next johto game be something that takes place in the future as opposed to the past what do you guys think like a rebuilt burnt tower yeah like like it's in the future like the tower has been rebuilt and a few other things have changed in the region it's become more futuristic or maybe they're grappling with like introducing modern things into this region that's so steeped in tradition and like maybe it's going to be a story about like finding that balance with that or something. I can definitely see like a villainous, villainous motive mismatching with the with the region's natives on that re regard. I could, I could see that because it kind of matches with the theme of Gen 9 mm -hmm. with, with the past and the future. And the future. Um, yeah. But I wonder if it would be too similar in theme to the Gen 9 games. Um, so it makes me wonder if they would actually do that or not. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We'll see. No but but part can. of the reason you said you think they're going to go for Johto next is because of Celebi and the whole time yeah. wave Bammy that comes with that. So, I mean, I think it's very possible, personally. I was going to say maybe they can Celebi event from Hungo Soul Silver into the main story. Like, make, the, make that flaw. Mm -hmm. If you play the Celebi event, when you go back in time, Giovanni and Silver before you properly meet them in the game. Mm -hmm. You meet them before the events. I think the Silver was before the events of the base game and then a Giovanni flashback is during the Radio Tower raid. Yeah. So maybe they can incorporate that into the main story. Yeah. Ideally, they would have you go to the past and the future and maybe even the present too, like three different times that you can travel between. But that's that's definitely asking too much and thinking too well, much into it. Well, what's What's interesting about Celebi is that Celebi is not able to really change events with time travel. It's just yeah. able to bring you to different things that are already supposed to happen in a certain way to make yeah. sure that those things happen. Yeah. So that's what Arceus that... did in, in Legends. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all of the time travel in Pokemon has been very careful. Fixed. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, either either fixed or multiversal. That's all they have. Mm -hmm. um, I believe because they uh, don't want to mess up the timelines. Yeah, I believe that Pokemon is set on fixed time travel theory, in the sense mm -hmm. that you can't change it because it's pre. It's like pre. I can't get the word out. Predestined to always happen, yes. no right, matter right, how right. You yeah. much you try to alter it. Yeah, yeah, I, but I because it's that. a multiverse and some of the travel is across both space and time at the same time, mm -hmm. that's when you get variations in like what happens, you know, yeah, like, like the Rainbow Rock, like Annabelle. Yeah, and Annabelle, you know, like being a faller 
um, it's called kinda Booker, like, you know? It, it's kind of like the Marvel, if you've watched Loki, you know, the, what is it called? The Grand Timeline? The... The uh, PVA. <laughs> what is it? What is the actual terminology for it? Not the grand timeline. The it's like the, the holy timeline. timeline. The sacred <laughs> timeline. Thank you. So I think it's a lot like that. Where like you can have multiple ver multi universes, right? But they all kind of mm -hmm. follow a similar path, and that's the yes. only way that they're able to exist. Uh, and I think it's going to follow. I think that's what Pokemon is like, yeah. too. Well, because any universe that falls too far out that gets destroyed by Guzzlord or Team yep. Rocket yep. or Archie and Maxi. Or, and we see evidence of those universes that don't do so well. So. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder. <laughs> Arceus and Celebi are just trying to patrol it all. <laughs> and I'm like, guys, come on. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay. So I think that covers... Um, what we think is going to happen for like the mainline remakes but we also have you know funny enough pos the possibility of ports of these older games for the game boy and game boy advance because they just introduced the game boy and game boy advanced emulators on the nintendo switch and they've only announced pokemon uh the, ca the card game the trading card game digital game that was for the game boy color i believe it was uh, or Game Boy and Game Boy Color. So they have not... Thank you. Thank you, Kayla. So they <laughs> have not... prepared. They didn't... <laughs> that's good. They didn't show off any of the mainline Pokemon games that were for those systems. And as we know, those are like the mascot games for those systems. So do you guys think we are going to see Pokemon ports of the traditional mainline games on the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance emulators? That was a long-winded way for me to ask that question. Yes. 100% <laughs> yes. You think so? Yeah. Even with the, all the Definitely. implications of trading and uh, interconnectivity. A well-known Switch hacker who was able to basically hack into the Game Boy app. And he showed that the image, like the selection screen, those are just PNGs of the actual game's box art. But behind that is ROM files. And he swapped out ROM files for Fire Red. And not only that, but he was able to make it connect to another Switch also running Fire Red. And he, they were, oh my God, they were able to trade. <laughs> uh, like, cause you know, some games have uh, wi like multiplayer, but they were able to, where it's Wi Fi now. And he was able to basically make the two copies of Fire Red able to reach each other through two different switches. And he entered a trading screen and did a successful trade. Wow. Okay. So they, so they might actually do it. That's good to know. Not only that, but they could also make it connect the Pokemon Home because once the, uh, once the 3DS eShop closes next month, there will be no easy way to access Gen One and Two GPA games anymore. Oh yeah, you're right cuz those were on there and and they ha they almost have to bring those in that way. I forgot that they were on that too. So that actually gives me even more faith on top of what you just mentioned that they would actually port them to the Switch. Gosh, that would be so great. I want to play Pokémon Crystal on my Switch. See, that's my only worry is that what if they only like what if they do like gold and silver and not crystal? I'll be so sad. Oh, no. They better do crystal. Well, they did it all on the 3DS, right? They it, it was yeah. all of them, not just. It was it was red, blue, yellow, gold, silver, and crystal. Okay. The Gen 3 games were the only ones. <laughs> okay, so that makes me more hopeful. They, it seems that they've already sort of like modernized the connectivity for the games in that way. You know, like implemented all the features from the games for a system that can keep the time and date. You know, for example, because uh, you know, gold, silver, crystal had that internal clock. So when you put it on the 3DS and it has a clock connected to the system, it seems like they've already worked out the coding for getting that aligned. So I think it would be easy for them at this point then to put all of the versions on the Switch. Yeah. That way they just know that they're going to make more sales so people can get I strongly recommend you watch the video. It's like super fascinating that the, the, the whole trading and battling thing was just a internal Switch to just make it able to go from LAN to just Wi-Fi. It's really crazy to think that that's, that can actually happen. So the fact that somebody was able to do that just implies that it's as simple as them just p plugging a ROM file into the game. Good to know. Good. I, I'm, that makes me really excited, actually, because 
like we just mentioned, we really want it. Okay, so then that answers that question on if we're going to see those. And do you think they're going to do the remakes too, like Fire Red and Leaf Green? You said that they already had that on there, or did they have to like put the ROM in themselves? They put the ROM in themselves, but okay. they were able to make they, it Wi-Fi compatible. They, they have Gens 1 and 2, right? Do they have Gen 3? Um, yeah, since the, the he used the he put Fire Red on the GBA emulator, mm -hmm. and he was playing, mm -hmm. of course, Fire Red, and he entered the chat the uh, po the Pokemon Center multiplayer lobby. I forgot. I know it's the Union Room. Yes, I don't yeah. know what it's mm -hmm. called in Yeah. So you do think they're okay, gonna so put the remake versions in too, not just like Hopefully. Ruby Sapphire Emerald? Do you think they're also gonna do like Fire Red and Leaf Green? If they can, it's a, if they will. So okay. there is some huge, amazing implications for that because secret bases and the connectivity with those in Gen 3 were super fun. So there, we might see a potential resurgence of that. Oh, yeah. So cool. Especially and since they weren't Emerald? in BDSP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Emerald with the Battle Frontier. Oh, my God. Everyone loved that Battle Frontier. That was a good Battle Frontier. Yeah. It was the best one. It was so much fun. And like, I just, I'm just, okay, I'm just very excited. Yeah, I did. I, right did now. <laughs> I usually don't like battle facilities like that, but I remember liking the one in Emerald a lot. I actually did have fun yeah. with it, which is crazy. I just love the aesthetic of it. This is kind of on the same topic of remakes, but not necessarily. But there's a lot of rumors swirling around about a new or returning mystery dungeon game for the Switch because Spike Chunsoft is listed under i think it was credits for the presents or something i forget what exactly it was someone referenced spike chunsoft on some internal data for the presents or on pokemon day so i'm excited about that because i love mystery dungeon 2 specifically i thought that was the best one in the series and so if they are remaking mystery dungeon 2 i'm really excited but we also might get a completely new mystery dungeon game what do you guys think about that uh, is mystery dungeon 2 the explorers uh yes games? yeah explorers heard, of no, time dark and sky it was three different i ones. never played those but i heard that they are the best in the series like hands down yes I played they are blue hands rescue down team. the best in the series yep i played blue rescue team and i absolutely loved it so if they were to remake those two uh, that that's I'm, I'm buying that like Hands down, first time. Yep, yeah, it was good. And they've already remade um, Blue and Red Rescue Team. So if they remake uh, PMD2, I, I'm hoping that they do an even, even better job at remaking it. They did a good job of making it pretty faithful with the remake of the first two Mystery Dungeon games. But I feel like Mystery Dungeon 2, fun ways that they can keep it faithful, but also spice it up even more. Or at least just remake Sky, because that one had extra stuff in it or something. Or maybe, maybe it's just they're bringing the original Red and Blue Rescue Team to the Game Boy Advanced emulator, which would kind of suck because only Red Rescue Team was on that one and that's not my favorite in the series. Yeah, I do think that they will remake it, Mystery Dungeon 2, because if you remember when they announced the remake of the originals, they announced it alongside the DLC for Sword and Shield. Like that was all revealed in that same direct. Was it? I think yes. you might be right. Yeah. Okay. And I, I just thought that was pretty interesting because they touched upon that and then they immediately dove into the DLC. Yeah. This was before Cafe and Unite and Masters, but at that time, they just they were like, "Hey, we're gonna talk about uh, these brief things, and now here's a remake, and then here's the DLC." And that was the fact that we actually got a Mystery Dungeon game because the last one was in. 15, I believe? Super Mystery Dungeon? Yeah, Super Mystery Dungeon was the one before that. I'm looking up the sales for the remake and it sold over a million copies. So yeah, they might really make, you're right, they might remake the second one. I played yeah. the beginning of the remake. I didn't love it though. Sorry. It, I don't, I totally get it. The first game, in my opinion, was not nearly as good. It had a lot of rough edges and the remake of it kept those rough edges, which I found yeah, really yes. odd. Yeah. I, I love the lore of it because I've watched like all the, the like actual cutscenes of Mystery Dungeon. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Like the lore is so good. It's just mm -hmm. the the gameplay style is just not my thing. You would probably like Mystery Dungeon too. It, it it's it, it brings quality of life things that make it enjoyable in a much more accessible way, and it really feels more like 
the, the Pokemon formula that we know from the mainline series, but mixed with the tactical aspect of moving around on a map at the same time. Um, whereas the first mystery dungeon feels so different from the mainline series in the sense that like everything works different. And, yes. and it's also like way more difficult, like really difficult. I don't, I don't know if you experienced difficulty when you played it either, but I, don't know. Uh, I was just does. lost all the time. Exactly. No. I'm really, yeah. I'm really like, I make my mapping videos because I know I will get lost. And by doing that, I will get lost less. Yep. So <laughs> yeah, Mystery Dungeon no. One is yeah. not not that great in that regard. It is still yeah. a good game. I think it's for a more niche audience, but PMD Two is way more accessible to the general Pokemon fan base. You won't get you won't feel so lost in that one. Not not nearly. It, yeah, it, Blue it's Rest really fun. made me cry. Like there were some bosses in the original that made me actually rate it. It was not fun. If you cried in the first one, you'll cry in the second one. I cried in the first one for the wrong reasons. <laughs> it was, it was, okay. It was the game's difficult. So the if you story, cried from the story in the first one, you'll definitely cry in the story for the second one. Okay. <laughs> because I cried in both of them, but the second one, oh my gosh, that one hits hard. That one was mean. Anyways, so you guys think that Mr. Dungeon 2 might be in the cards. You don't think it's going to be a new game, a new Mr. Dungeon I hope game it at all. is. But if they do remake the second one, I just want them to add uh the other general because with the, the remake didn't add any new generations it only added mega megas and pri primals mm -hmm. they didn't add the gens like four to five four to eight at the time i really remake this one day would at least incorporate them not story that's like right you know you can recruit them in dungeons right right yeah I, that would be interesting i'm fine either way whether they do that or not but for accessibility, I think it would be good for them to do what you're saying and adding more modern Pokemon to it as well, at least just to have on your rescue team. So, right. yeah, I'm with you. Okay, well, in that case, let's go ahead and move on to other ideas you guys might have for what we might be seeing, like miscellaneous things like mobile games or updates to mobile games. Obviously, we'll probably see some sort of Pokemon Go announcement, some sort of, uh, what's that other game, Masters? Some sort of master's announcement. Uh, what else? What do you guys have in mind? Let's start with you, Kayla. Because you actually play well, this. <laughs> <laughs> so they seemed to be kind of like promoting the card game more when they did the announcement and they like showed like the trading card game version thing. So I'm wondering, <laughs> I know I'm just like, Choo! but um, I'm wondering if they're going to have some sort of card game related either game on the switch or mobile game or something to teach people more about because that card game video game taught me how to play pokemon cards when i was young yeah. and there's a lot of things that have changed since that has come out with the mm. pokemon card game in general so having like an updated version of the pokemon trading card game having that as kind of like a hey this is how it used to be you can get the retro feel of it it's like a simplified version and then having one with the new rules and all the new mechanics in there um i think that it could bring a lot of people to the card game which nintendo would be like cha-ching cha -ching, um, yeah. especially yeah especially because there are so many unboxing videos of cards right now mm -hmm. i just feel like that is a logical thing for them to do and the emphasis they put on it in the direct i'm like oh okay i yeah. think this is where they're going you're right and remember how like i think it was just like a year or two ago what was happening with pokemon cards and people like fighting over them and stuff because they became so rare because right. everyone was buying them up yeah i think you're right i yeah. think that it might be like a really good way to get people into i would love to get into the card game personally I would definitely buy that like 100% but i'm exactly the kind of person you just described i don't know how to play the card game so if yeah. they made a video game version of it i could probably learn how to do it and then have fun collecting the cards and doing things with them instead of just using them as display shelf type stuff <laughs> yeah and like if we look at when the card game kind of blew up compared to now it's almost the exact right amount of time for a game to be developed like that so yeah. You're right. You're right. Uh, when these when these things started happening with the cards, they probably like thought like, "Hey, maybe it's about time we make this." <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, what about you, Cam? Do you have any other ideas for what they might show off? 
Well, I like like Kayla said, I just want to learn how to play the TCG because it seems really, really hard to get into it right now. Mm -hmm. So I would love to play it. If there was any really want to see happen, I, I want another Ranger game. It's been a really long time since we played Ranger. Like, I, even though I know it's dual screen and they may like have to revamp the gameplay to work with single screen, but I would love to play Ranger again. As for other small things, I can see them uh, doing more Masters characters. Hopefully they can they can manage to add the Hasui characters because I don't know if you know the lore of Masters, but there's always like time traveling shenanigans happening in that game. So I can definitely see Hoopa possibly bringing, I don't know, Irida or Adamon or just random characters. Since most of the Hasui characters only fight with one to like two partners, this is like the perfect game for them since Adam and Irida can just bring in their Leafeon and Glaceon and things like that. And they can make it an event, but definitely I would love to see those because I don't want those characters to just die, even though they're, they're technically dead. <laughs> they like, die, like, most games forever. I would be able to see them interact with, like, maybe their descendants and masters. So I would love to see that. I, I, I don't expect to see Gen 9 characters so soon, but definitely I want them to add a uh, Hasui banner. Yeah, I, there's two things I would say about the Ranger games. One, I, I think that if they do ever bring that series back, it's going to be completely different gameplay. It's not going to be drawing circles in any capacity. Um, I Other than that, I'm looking up sales for... There was three of them, right? Uh, yeah, games. there was Ace One, Shadow of a Al Lumia, and Guardians. Second. And Guardians. And Guardians was the last one. And it looks like I don't know if it broke a million sales. So they might not even bother. I feel like they have like a very like dedicated following though. Yeah. I feel like there are people who Rangers is like their thing. So Well that's the and thing with all of their spin-offs, I think. Yeah. I never snap would come back and we got new pokemon snap so anything is possible when it comes to spinoffs at this point anything is possible but snap did sell well originally and i'm looking yeah, up the, the 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 deciding factor i'm looking up super mystery dungeon i want to see how many sales that one got because they brought the mystery dungeon series back so i want to see if they did that because they still had good sales or not in the meantime i do want to say that I personally am hoping for a new Poke Park game. I will always say that for all of my speculations about like miscellaneous Pokemon things. Like I would love another Poke Park game. Poke Park 3 would be so fun. And it was made by Poke Park 1 and 2 was made by Creatures Inc, which is still involved with Pokemon. There's still the people that make the Pokemon models for Game Freak uh, in the mainline games. So I'm hoping for another Poke Park game. Those games are so fun. Have you guys played Poke Park? Any I have a friend no. who has, and he begs for a third game. So I, I can understand. He loves talking about it. It's another one of those games. It's like Mystery Dungeon in the sense of, like the story can make you cry at certain points, but it's also a lot more goofy, too. Uh, like, there's more of a range of, like, goofy and and serious. And uh, I the gameplay is more fun, in my opinion, because it's like an adventure game, you know? Like, you're going yeah. around and solving overworld puzzles with different Pokemon that you play as and things like that. I remember a scene where Ashwa walking behind a Haxorus, and a Haxorus just, like, slams them with its tail. Yep. And that caught me off guard. Yep, and you can attack the Pokemon in the overworld, too. Like, I've, like, <laughs> I've like pushed Pokemon into the water and stuff. <laughs> it's so fun. Fun. And the sound you know effects are so are, goofy. <laughs> you know what game they're not going to remake? What? Pokemon Channel. No. Oh, well. Oh, that was so... That's, there's a reason for that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I if you know, you know. <laughs> I can't find sales figures on Super Mystery Dungeon, so I can't really say for sure what that looked like for them on remaking it. Got good reviews, though. So there is that. Whereas uh, Ranger did not review so well. So I don't know. I don't know what their prerequisites are for the remakes, but we'll see. It's possible. Uh, regardless. Speaking of, 
speaking of remakes, if they're gonna put Gen 3 on the Switch, are they gonna also put Pokemon Coliseum and XD Gale of Darkness? I wish. Because those are Gen 3. I don't think those so. Those are Gen 3. I think that Game Freak is lobbying against them because Game Freak seems very adamant about never seeing a return of Coliseum or Gale of Darkness or any of the Genius Sonority games. I don't know why. I think it's because they're mad about how good those games were <laughs> and how much people liked them. But it's so funny because the Pokemon Go has Shadow Pokemon and that's from that. So <laughs> Yeah, it referencing the characters and where's where's my um where where's my uh, mirror B banner in Masters? Like he exists. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, they're lobbying against it. They're not letting stuff from that game the dark pokemon sure but that was also in the anime so that's probably why they're okay with that but like the rest and the of card it... game too oh yeah. yeah that's right you're right there were dark yeah. uh, pokemon in the card game and like rocket pokemon mm -hmm. and stuff um yep. so i don't think that they're gonna let any more G genius sonority or any like look at what genius sonority is making now the pokemon remix cafe Oh, I didn't know they made. Them. They made, yeah, they're the ones who make Pokemon Cafe Remix, which is Cafe so Remix sad. Cafe Remix is adorable, but like Coliseum. I know it's it's just funny that that's what they relegated them to was like this like mini game side game instead of like a I don't know a full fledged game. Um, but on on that note, we're let's let's end on a positive note, and that's by saying. I think there are really great things to look forward to when it comes to Scarlet and Violet DLC for this upcoming uh, Presents. There's also great things to look forward to on w whether we get a, a full reveal of the next remake or Legends game or whatever it is. You know, it's a, an exciting prospect regardless, you know, and, and the ports and whatever they're doing with Spike Chunsoft for presumably Mystery Dungeon. That's all just like super exciting and and i'm excited about all of it so it was great getting to talk about this with you guys i hope you had fun and i hope that the audience had fun with us i'm sure they did you can find kayla from kayla's capsule at kayla's capsule on youtube or twitter whatever it is kayla with a c and yep. cam and Tendo. i have a discord I have a Discord oh, now yes. too. The Discord's called Capsule Monsters. It's really fun. We're talking about theories and just generally Pokemon stuff. So if you like that kind of thing, I would highly recommend that you join. Yep. So you can find that on her in the descriptions of her videos, especially her newer mm -hmm. ones, because that's more likely to have it. Uh, and then Cam Tendo with a K, not a C. Yes. <laughs> uh, Cam Tendo, exactly how you would expect that to be spelled here on YouTube and also on Twitter. And do you have a Discord as well? I have a link if you if you guys can find it. Okay. It's under all my videos. All right. So we'll do that. And also everyone can join the Discord channel that I have in my video description here. And you can find Cam Tendo and Kayla both on that Discord channel and go onto their Discord channels from there. It's all connected. We're all connected. <laughs> we're we're the multiverse. We are the multiverse of Pokemon video making. <laughs> and I'm of course Johto Johnny. Until the next vodcast, everyone, have fun with more of our videos and with our Discord channels. Peace out. See ya. Bye. It always cuts you off when you do that. I had it held it out longer. Did it work that time? It, it, Did I just say it again? It cut in and out. Go ahead and say it again. Sure. It's, but I'm keeping both in. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> that one didn't cut out. Yeah, she ate with that Yay. one. <laughs> mm -hmm.